Welcome to Peter Ruffy's Football Show. We're live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Richard Foster and Tam McManus here with me in the studio. Thank you very much to you for hitting the subscribe button because quite simply on a daily basis now we're seeing our figures going up and up and up as people realise we are exclusively live on our YouTube channel. So it's great that you are supporting us in great numbers. Thank you for the thousands who've been listening to the podcast as well. And, uh, Ruffy, lots of people now downloading the app because they know you can watch it live on the app and you get all the breaking sports stories. Yeah, and I keep saying my guys who I go a bit with the golf, you know, they're really into it. And now particularly the live, you know, makes it a lot easier for them. They don't have to hang about and wait, to, wait for it at night. Yeah, I've got to ask you this big question, Ruffy. Do you wish with all the great strips that you had... Uh, I know you put some of them in an auction. Do you maybe wish you'd held on uh, to the strips that you had to maybe run about now? Because some auctions, the, the, the tops are going for fortunes. Yeah, I saw the, the wee Bertie's uh, yeah. uh, jersey that he'd swapped with a boy for the opposition. Yeah, and it's their Milan. family that's putting it up, yeah. yeah. The 1967 Celtic top yeah. from Bertie Old up for auction March 25th. Which, I have to say, Ruffy, is three days before my birthday. I don't want to put the thought in your head, mm -hmm. but it's a big one. It's a big strip, isn't it? Yeah, it will be, you know, and I, I think we all know who will go for it. You know, he yeah. usually goes for most of the Celtic stuff uh, and might yeah. hand it back to Charlie. Um, well, well, I think Willie Hockey likes to go for it, but Hockey. Celtic might be in there for it as well, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's something that you would really want yeah, to get it's a hold quite, of. Yeah, it's quite, I mean, we were there when the Jimmy Johnson one went up, and because it's... The hoops jersey, there's no badge on it. Yes, you know, it's just it looks like a right bland green and white jersey. Then the old a letter school. of provenance yeah. with this. I think yeah, yeah, provenance yeah. when it comes from the Inter Milan player who swapped it with him. Yeah. Then you know you've got the the real deal as well. That's that Willie Mancini. Yeah, just the boy <laughs> doing the road to has got all these strips. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know who I'm going to see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The Vettel's a lot of strips out there here. Yeah, well, you know. to be fair, this, this is coming from the guy who swapped it with him, and it's in Milan. I mean, come on. Uh, that's what you want on it. Um, of course, listen, these things are fantastic. I mean, you need to be really lucky, Ruffy. I mean, I think I've got his Bertie's 1969 Scottish Cup final shirt. Well, but I, that one, I think, is... I was at the Patrick Thistle Celtic Glasgow Cup tie today at Airdrie. Yeah. And I went up the corridor and there's five jerseys from the Alan Luff collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, on there? Oh, yeah, oh, jerseys, five international jerseys. Up well, there, signed. Fine. Whereabouts? On, on Airdrie, and as you go up in the stadium inside. Yeah, well, that's good going. Uh, I like a wee bit of uh, memorabilia and all that. Have you got, do you collect, and you don't strike me as the guy <laughs> who would collect anything <laughs> like that. No, not really. My dad kind of collects programmes and stuff from when I was at Aberdeen and the kind of Rangers and that. I've got, you know, I've got cup final programmes and the shirt and stuff I wore there, but um, no, I've, I've got a couple of tops. Maybe I've not, not really played in that many games to want to swap shirts yeah. or with that many people that I want, I want a shirt. And then you get the shirt and you just have it. <laughs> it's, like, it's just there in your house in a box in the, in the attic or yeah. oh, you get it framed and then you put it up on the wall well I've got one framed and that was the Ross County one um, you know when we won the League Cup um, it was a pretty special jersey but then other than that nah, you're right I'm, I'm not really a, a hoarder of jerseys no um, if you had one that you would want if somebody said look you can have any one you want what would it be probably Brazilian Ronaldo's World Cup he scored two in the final that, yeah. would, be, that would be the, the pinnacle I think Hank, or, Hank, Hank he's the best player ever or, or any Ronald, Brazilian Ronaldo no, top? I, I, any, any, any top. Uh. Okay, uh, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a, there's a few. Um, I actually tried to get. I played against David Beckham when I was in America. That would have been good. And a couple of months before the end, I was playing up front here. I just just dropped into the right midfield role. <laughs> as you do. And I was just waiting for that. I just kept looking at everybody getting pat battered, and I just kept waiting because blow the whistle. So as soon as the whistle, I says, "Can I can you get it?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get it after the game." And I'm sitting waiting and I'm shutting my door and all that. Yeah. Oh, David's left. Did he leave me his jersey? No, no, he never left the jersey face on. All right. Oh, Bye. Nothing worse than that, by the oh, way. Oh, I'd love that one. No, yeah, absolutely. That would have been sensational. But nevertheless, uh, it's always good going. Uh, a wee bit of memorabilia. Bertie's top is going to go for an absolute fortune. 1967. Fantastic. Anyway, apart from anything else, thanks to the countless amount of people 
uh, who actually uh, have messaged us and, and, and it goes on. Uh, the uh, Scott Brown, whether he's a failure or not, uh, goes on in our feed, by the way. Just, it's, it's amazing how many people just um, want to continue the whole the whole battle on it. We will probably speculate today, Rafi, on where he's going. We'll be talking Rangers in the Europa League. We'll talk Champions League football and we'll also talk about big games uh, coming up uh, in the... Uh, domestic front here, not only in the league, but also Scottish Cup quarter-final ties coming up too. And Ruffy will also be drawing the uh, Scottish Junior Cup semi-finals tomorrow. Oh. Are you happy with that? Oh, fantastic, yeah. Uh, yeah, always like a bit of the juniors, don't we? Yeah, wonderful, since I've already won that Junior Cup final. Yeah, yeah my, dad, my, dad was playing walk, my dad was playing walking football the other day, and he bumped into a guy who was in your team, Tam, was it Tom Brown? We talking Tom about? Brown, aye. He played said, with Kilmarnock. So he won the Scottish Cup with Kamala and he won the Junior Cup with Glen Afton. Yeah. Yeah. He was, was talking to my dad and he says, I big rough, he was a gaffer. He was a good player. He was yeah. fantastic. I got him for Del Rai. I couldn't believe it when I, when I saw him. He was only about five foot eight and could jump one of the ones that could jump six foot five. Yeah. You know? And that's why Tommy Burns took him to Kilmarnock. Uh, he was just a powerhouse. And I, every time I met Tommy Burns, he said, that's one of the best deals I've ever Go from the juniors, obviously. Yeah. But uh, no, a great wee player. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's read out some uh, messages. John McLean says, uh, turns out that despite all the hype, Scott Brown's signing by Aberdeen was a disaster, according to John. It doesn't matter what shirt you wear or how good you wear. When the legs go, opposition players run past you. Um, again and again, we see players carry on far too long. Sentiment doesn't win championships or keep you in the top flight. Um, I'm not quite sure where John's going with this. I, I don't think there's a logical outlook on this one. Um, Scott Brown won't care a jot about whether some people think he's a, a failure or a success. 23 medals tells you he's been an, uh, you know, a, an overall success in his career. And I don't think he was the reason. Uh, I don't think he's anywhere near the reason why Aberdeen failed so miserably this season. No, I, I, I don't agree with that either. I you know. Scott Brown ticks all the boxes, you know, uh, if you buy Scott Brown you know what you're getting. You're, you're getting somebody who's going to raise a lot of people around a Burton's game, you know, because of the way he plays himself. Yeah, he can. he's getting on in the game, yeah, his fitness level's probably only the same, but uh, when he goes on that park, uh, or even in the dressing room as well, he's, he, he's going to be an asset. Yeah, absolutely. Here's uh, what he had to say uh, about, obviously, um, you know, just uh, retiring. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the board and, of course, Stephen Glass uh, for giving me the opportunity to enjoy my first taste of coaching. And I'd also like to thank all of my teammates and the great staff, both at uh, Comart Park and Pataudry. Uh, I know I was only in the North East for a short period, but the fans made me so welcome from day one. So my thanks must go to them for showing me so much support. Aberdeen is a huge club and I know there is a real determination from all to deliver success both on and off the pitch. I wish them all the best for the remainder of the season. So a nice classy way to say uh, goodbye, Tam. Yeah, well, was. Listen, I think that Scott Brown would have left when Stephen Glass and, and the rest of the staff left, but it wasn't possible at the time. I think he obviously had a playing contract, but I think he's that type of guy. He's, he's a loyal person and I think he would have been loyal to the guys that brought him in. Stephen Glass brought him into the club as a player coach and I think when they left, he would have left. But obviously the playing contract, it's now been sorted out that he's left. I don't think he'll play again. I don't think he'll play again. I think he'll now, yeah. I think he'll now go down the coaching route. I think he'll look to get in somewhere and, and get coaching and get experience. And then he'll look to, to try and get a, a number two or a number one somewhere. But whatever happens, he's been a fantastic player. I can remember him as a 16-year-old kid with a red stripe in his hair, cleaning my boots at Hibs. And to see what he's achieved in the game. Uh, I would never have imagined that, but it's his attitude and his ability that's made him a brilliant player for, for Celtic. Yeah, uh, I think uh, some people, uh, and I think we've got to take it with a pinch of salt, Richard, but some people just don't like Scott Brown um, for, whatever re for whatever reason, <laughs> which I, I find is uh, hilarious at, at the best of times. Uh, he had one stinking season at Celtic, again, not his fault. Um, I think overall he'll be looking with great pride at what he's achieved. Of course he will. I think the, the season you spoke about, he, he played, you know, with an injured hamstring for most of the season as well. Because so there, 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 and that shows you the, the character that he's got and the willingness to play even when he knows he's not fully fit and he knows he's getting pelters because he's not performing at the level he did consistently for you know over ten years. He'd probably the, he'd be the most decorated player in Scotland comfortably, I would imagine. Um, and I. 
he went into Aberdeen, it was a difficult situation, you know, you're going in there, you've got a young manager, um, and you're kind of, you're the assistant manager, but you're also still playing, it's a, it's a difficult role, it was a, almost a new role, you know, you, you know players are going in and do a bit of coaching here and there, but not, not, not usually with the first team, um, and, and like you said, Aberdeen's a huge club, and it's, there's a lot of expectation, and for that to be your first, your first taste of coaching while still having to play, and you're trying to wear the, the two hats at different times, it's, I kind of felt from because it was a it was an awkward situation for him, and you know he's obviously he obviously feels himself that he can't he can't quite deliver anymore on the pitch, so he's probably decided look, my my time's up, and and what a career he's had, um, playing career, and the, the games he played at Aberdeen, I thought he did okay, mm. you know I, I don't think he was anything wrong with his performance, he didn't look, yes he wasn't the Scott Brown of old, but he, he didn't look like his legs are completely gone, but I think he's obviously just thought, what's the point, and and kind of trying to find a new club when, when he's, he clearly wants to go into coaching. Yeah, I think he'll wait to the summer. I had a chat with him this morning and he said he's going to just enjoy his family for the moment, which I, I think is uh, is exactly what you'd expect him to do. Yeah, yeah I spoke to him yesterday as well. I think he's going to get out on the golf course and get golfing again. He loves his golf. I think yeah. he's going to go out and play again. He might be away on holiday. Um, so, listen, he's got three young kids, three young boys, and he'd be wanting to spend time with them. He's been up and down. I know he moved up to Aberdeen, but... I think his family were still part of his family were still in Edinburgh, so I think he'll just take a wee bit of time out. And you're right, I think in the summer he'll look to see if he can get in somewhere uh, in the Premier League. Yep, absolutely. Uh, thanks to all the people who sent uh, varying degrees of mad messages about the Scott Brown situation, but he's a player who can uh, at this moment. Uh, retire when he eventually just makes the official announcement he's not going to kick a ball again and then he'll make his decision to go elsewhere. We wish him well um, as we do all footballers um, because you want to see them have a good career. Uh, Chris says, Ruffy, um, he, he sent a photograph, Chris. I didn't want to put it up because obviously it's the one where you look as if you are uh, a German porn star, Ruffy. <laughs> there's, no, there's no point in putting it off. You remember that blonde with the, the moustache? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. only person there, uh, a perm in his hair and a perm in the moustache. Yes, absolutely. And Chris <laughs> says, I came across this photograph on uh, an old Scottish football page, uh, not posted in a while, but always like to hit Ruffy with an old photograph of a, if I stumble across one. I've been watching from day one, uh, which is good going for Chris, mm -hmm. by the way. That's great that we've got people 10 years down the line, Ruffy. Yep. Um, you know, there's there's only one team that gets ten in a row, and they're sitting next to you, Richard. <laughs> let me tell you, <laughs> it could all come crumbling down in the summer. But but at the end of the day, uh, Ruffy, Chris has been with us yep. since day one, as a lot of people have, and yep. I think we're delighted with that. Yeah, we're more than Chris. You know, there's lots and lots of guys who've who've hung on in there through the 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 old times, and obviously now they, they've got the new stars on, yeah. hanging on in bigger numbers. Yeah, the young team are on as well, and there's a different attitude, Ruffy, I think, between you and I uh, and the two guys we've got here, and we're about to find it out over the next couple of topics, so let's get into the meat and bones and see if we can pick a fight with them. Um, I'm amazed that Dragon Mladenovic uh, has accused Rangers of being arrogant uh, with this. He says uh, Rangers deservedly won convincingly over Borussia Dortmund but now they're a little bit ar arrogant about it. They're thinking, uh, well we beat Borussia so they're the second best club in Germany. We're going to beat Red Star. I don't think it's the players. I think it's maybe some of the supporters. I think they were, they were happy with the draw. I think there were some clubs in there in the draw that they could have, you know, Seville, West Ham teams like that who you would think Rangers are underdogs, you know, big yeah. time. But I think in this game I would have Rangers probably slight favourites going into it because they've just beat Dortmund. So I think if Rangers can beat Dortmund and play the way they can play, they can play, they can beat anyone. So I don't think there's an arrogance among the players, maybe some of the supporters. Yeah. Maybe that's peeved them off a wee bit over there. Well, can I tell you something? As you know, the studios were built by a whole team of fanatical Rangers fans. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them, the boys, were in today as well. And they said to me they would have swapped the win over Borussia Dortmund for the win over Motherwell. Really? Hmm. It's an interesting one, isn't it? How, yeah, you know? probably. And obviously, the league this season is huge for both clubs for the financial riches that come with. But listen, Rangers get through this tie. They're, they've got a wee chance of getting, you know, the semi-final, final. I'm telling you, they're, they're made for Europe, Rangers, and they're, the, they're a team to fear. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's an interesting uh, tale on it. Um, the, boy, the boys who obviously built the studio, Rangers fans, and, and when I said to them about that, they said. Yeah, but they would rather have the win over Mother. It's, it's quite. It's, you, you'll get a split from some people on this. Yeah, because I think they get through this tie in that hand circle title. I think, you know, two more games against Red Star, then 
potentially more games. You've seen them struggle on the Sunday after coming back from old uh, from from European fixtures. I think it's just too much to ask, especially when there's there's not been a lot of changes to the team. Um, I think that it's you know if, if you're a Celtic fan and <laughs> Celtic players, you know I'm I'm backing Rangers to the hilt in Europe. I'm wanting them to progress as, as far as possible because. Um, physically and mentally, it's so difficult to pick yourself up, especially an emotional high like beating Borussia Dortmund through the first leg, and then having to pick yourself up with no disrespect and go away to I don't know, Dundee United or something. Was it? You know, it's 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 really really difficult. And like I say, that's maybe the time to put in the, the the guys in the fringes who are desperate for a game instead of kind of playing the same team again. Who are like I say, trying to pick themselves back up. So I think I you know I I can see where they're coming from that these European ties are could cost Rangers the title. And just picking up on that point you made there, because the boys today that I was mm. talking to, um, they follow Rangers everywhere, and they were saying to me, you know, he, he's not making substitutions either, which they are amazed at. They are. I mean, what is the point in having a squad? And they've got a good squad. Um, but you, you then get to this part of the season, you know, the, the really kind of crucial part of the season, where a lot of your players are not as match sharp as they could be because they've not had as many games, you know, your Scott Wrights and, and guys like that. And I heard just talking, you know, the other day about the, the substitution for Morelos off and Roof on and it, it paid off because Roof scored. But I'm thinking nil nil at home and you're taking off Morelos. I'm thinking that's a ridiculous decision. Yeah. Even even though it's panned out okay, I'm still thinking put Roof on alongside Morelos and, t- and take off a, a full back or a sitting midfielder or something. But you know, he, he doesn't like making a lot of changes and he wants to keep the continuity in the team. But I think in the, in the domestic games in the last few, although they've, you know, St. Johnson and the game there, they scraped over the line, they look a bit lethargic. Yeah. I think it, they need to be freshened up. I don't know about you, Rafi. I, I can understand where some Rangers fans are thinking domestically because there's so much at stake. But, you know, runs in Europe are always special, especially if you can get to a final. I mean, although I think even the most hardened Rangers fan would have looked at 2008 and thought, mm, this is a step too far. And remember, by the way, they'd get past Fiorentina, good side. Werder Bremen, good side. Sporting Lisbon, good side. Uh, at that time, they were on a great run. But, uh, you know, I think even even the most ardent Rangers fan would look and say, Zenit St. Petersburg was a bridge too far. But... This this competition this season, if you get all the way to the final, it would be. Yeah, oh, it's absolutely amazing. I think, I think any Rangers supporter was at that final. I mean, we were there as well. You know, yeah. covering it, it's like Seville. It was a, a remarkable occasion. Some that I'll remember for the rest of your your career or your life. You know, supporting a club, and I, I would take the European run. You know, I, I know we're all saying that the, the top of the league gets the 40 million, but you're saying there are circumstances where it could be two of them, you know, if the, the coefficients well, in other countries. Well, basically so what we're happens... Putting everything in this 40 million, everybody's... But it might be a positive if they can keep doing well, Rangers, that we can keep ahead of the other coefficients and the, the second might get an easier run in. Well, basically, the way it's looking at the moment, you'll get one team that would automatically get into the group stages. You would then have the team who finished second which is going to be obviously, you know, Rangers or Celtic, um, would get into the third qualifier. So they're only one game away from getting into the group stages. That's the way it's looking. There are permutations here and there, but it it still would be good if you only have to face one qualifier. And if you're seeded in that qualifier, (laughs) you know, you're in with a good shout, you know. See, if you lose that, Peter, that final qualifier, do you go into the Europa League group stage? Yeah, you drop into the Europa League. I don't know if you get into the group stage. I would imagine there's a good chance you would. Right. Um, um, but even if you go into that and play a qualifier um, for the the Europa League, you know you're still going to be you're still going to be you're still going to be seeded yeah, above. If, you, if yeah. you lose that, you get into the Conference League, and if you lose that, you get into the what? Ten sixes. <laughs> 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 or, or, as some, or, or as some Rangers fans have said to Celtic I think you're in the Eurovision Song Contest you know do you remember one of my mates who sent me a text saying should I book tickets for Albania and I said why what's happening there because you're never getting to the final I mean honestly there has to be a sense of realism about it Ruffy I don't think Celtic were anywhere near you know, the latter stages. I think Ange knew exactly where his side were in that tournament. Um, this one with Rangers, you know, because of the way they can take a few scalps, you, you, you know, you wouldn't bet a bit. It's not being arrogant saying they can get past Red Star Belgrade. 
No, I don't think anybody for Rangers has been arrogant. You know, I think everybody's got their point of view, but I don't remember the Rangers manager or Rangers players coming out and saying, well, this is going to be an easy tie. They, they know it's going to be a difficult tie. I mean, all these teams are very difficult to beat. You've got to be top of your game. Uh, but, I mean, I think we'd all like to see a, a Scottish team get into another final. You know, you've already thrown out the debate, is this team better than the team that got to Manchester? You know, and everybody's got their view on that. Yeah, yeah. Do, if you win the Europa League, do you get into the Champions League? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, uh, so Celtic could win the league and Rangers could win the Europa League and could two teams in the Champions League? Yeah. Which would be awesome, wouldn't it? Well, you've got that odds in that sheet there for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Calm your jets, Richard. Um, three, <laughs> three billion to one. Yeah. The, the other thing about it, though, is, Ruffy, what happens then is, uh, you know, uh, we always were saying 30 to 40 million. The, the two clubs, if they were both in the group stages, would share the TV revenue. But the potential to earn 30 to 40 million is absolutely there. Um, and it's massive for both clubs, so um, that's why we, we want to see both of them in it. I like reading out some of the opinions on people, um, but I, I have to say, uh, Graham Kennedy's lost the plot. He says, if Rangers won the Europa Cup, it would be a bigger achievement than Celtic winning the European Cup in 1967, uh, given they would have played more games to achieve it. Um, Graham away and lie down and have a, have a cup of tea um, I think at the end of the day we're in a different era now Ruffy mm -hmm. um, you know one one stage at a time just I don't think anybody in their right mind when they looked at 2003 for Celtic and, and 2008 for Rangers you know as you were going game game by game team by team you thought it'd be great to get there but these are the tournaments and this is the level Scottish teams are at now I'd love I'd love to be in a situation where we were talking about Celtic or Rangers in the last 16 are knockout stages of the Champions League, but it's getting more and more difficult to even just get in it. Yeah, it's a financial thing, isn't it? We had the last thing, the big European game we were at was Celtic versus Man City. You know, do you remember that night yeah. at Parkhead? It was just electric. Just if you're a player, that's where you want to be. Each. You want to be playing in these three each. Yeah, it was just yeah. one of these nights that were, it was incredible. And I, I think any, any, teams that get to the Champions League and you come up again, you're testing yourself against better players, you know, and it, it just, it's just a joy to be there. And as a supporter, you know, if, if you're brought up with that, you know, that's what you expect your, your team to be playing against. Who were we with? Who were we with that night, Ruffy, that kept jumping up and down like a madman? I can't remember. No? No? Uh, Bobby Petter. Was it Bobby Petter? Was it? Yeah, absolutely. Have you met Richard? Yeah, yeah just testing. Was he working with? He? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Bobby, Bobby Prada. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it does a bit of DJing as well now. Um, Sean says Rangers are 16 to 1 to win the Europa League. Uh, and with that in mind, I'm, I'm going to read you out the teams. Just to, so we get a, a sense of this here Leipzig, Spartak Moscow, Seville, West Ham, Barcelona, Galatasaray, Atalanta, Leverkusen, Braga, Monaco. And then, of course, you've got uh, Rangers and Red Star. And let's not forget, still, um, from the games tonight, uh, Matisse, Frankfurt, Porto and Lyon. <laughs> Rangers are not going to win the Europa League. <laughs> I'm not being disparaging. No, but I don't. There's I don't, a sense of realism yeah, here. Yeah, I think 16-1 to 1 is, is not long enough odds. I think they're, in my head, they're at least 50-1 to 1 to win that. I know yeah. there are only, what, 16 teams left, but still, I mean... You just you read out those teams there, and yes, all these teams they're, they're in the Europa League for different reasons. I.e., they've maybe had a poor Champions League campaign, or they never qualified for a poor league campaign. But yeah, I mean, th th even Barcelona, like they must be the favourites now. I know they're not having a great season, but they've come out in the game now. They've come out in the game now. Yeah, stronger Barca. Yeah, okay. Um, thanks for your opinions on it, but you know we're obviously going to go give our thoughts on it. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst has been speaking today about the game. Uh, this is what he had to say. I don't see any of my players being arrogant. We are very humble in this moment. We enjoy being in Europe, but we respect every opponent we face. And I don't see any signs of arrogance in my team, in myself or the club. Uh, we are playing a tough team who were group winners, but I have a full confidence we can have a good result. We will do everything possible to progress to the next round. We play in different systems and I played against different systems. In Europe, you have to be dynamic. Uh, well, you know, the best thing I can say about it, because I don't think anybody here is going to say, hey, I, I follow Serbian football week in, week out. Um, you've got a Rangers side who have had two wins in the last five, three draws. 
Red Star have uh, you know obviously won their last five matches. Um, it, you know you can talk about all the history you want of the two teams. It's all about the here and now. Um, and at home, I think Rangers can you know face the best of them and and try and get out of, and get a good result. You wouldn't bet against them when you look at the the evidence of what you've witnessed before with them. Yeah, I think I think certainly at home, um, Rangers have got. A real good chance to get the crowd behind you. The crowd, it's a different, like you spoke about before, it's a different atmosphere. The European games, the crowd, you know, sometimes in domestic games, it's, you know, it's up to the players going to entertain the fans, get them going. But the European nights, the place is bouncing. You know, as soon as the fans come in, they're singing before the kickoff. So by the time kickoff happens, the, the fans are up, and that gives you a huge lift walking out to that. And I think so that it gives, rain, you know, and you know, Ibrox is, can be quite hostile if you go there as, a, as an opposing team and I think it's it's a difficult place to play, especially if, if Rangers start the game well, which they've been doing um, in the European games. So I think I, I think they've got, uh, you know, they're more than capable of winning at home. It's just, it's just can they then, for all the things I've just suggested, the Rangers have at home, Red Star will have that at their home patch. Can yeah. Rangers deal with that when they go away? Uh, OK, I think Rangers are going to win it 2-1, Ruffy. What are you going for? Yeah, I think they'll win the game, you know, but I think the success of Rangers this year has been the damage they've done away from home, you know, and, and I might be wrong here that most of their games have been away from home first, you know, and, and that's where they're built on what they've went in the Ibrox. It's a reverse role. This is the first home game I think they've had for a wee while, and uh, I, I think they've got to win it, you know, I think you've got to go away from home with a bit of confidence. So? Uh, I'm going to go for 2-0. Two nothing. Okay, uh, Richard. Three one. Three one to Rangers. Yeah, just just checking. Yeah, that, <laughs> this is a, this is a, this is an arrogant side of the couch. That's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it is by the way. Uh, okay, you no, I, I fancy Rangers as well. I, I just think they're, they're made for Europe. I think every every team bar Celtic in the Premiership goes in parts of us in Europe. Teams are open and they go and attack Rangers and it suits them down to the ground. So I think Rangers will win the win the game and win the tie comfortably. Comfortably? Yeah, I think Rangers will get through comfortably. Yeah? I do, yeah. I think they'll win 2 nothing, and I think they'll beat them away from home as well. Okay. That's what I like about you, Tam. You're, there's a real there's a real conviction about you at the moment. You're just, you're, you're just giving us it straight all the time. Um, I, see, now I feel a bit of pity for you. I really hope you get a goal for him soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, just, 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 let's not talk about them. Just Don't want, want to back that down. Just, just one to get your commentary <laughs> going again. Um, big game tonight. Dundee St Mirren I'm going up to it Ruffy because that's what you know that's what people do when there's big games you go to them yeah. um, and this one at Dens Park is going to be an absolute belter because Stephen Robinson can't buy a win since he got back in Scotland with St Mirren and Mark McGee desperately needs this one yeah I mean I think St Mirren have been uh, short a, a, a couple of big players obviously the boy Ronan I think he'll be back uh, I'm just going to stick my neck out with Dundee in this one I don't know I just think it's good. you've got to get a wee rub of the green sometime. If they can be tight at the back, uh, I think they could maybe win this one 2 1. Yeah, um, Stephen Robinson knows this is going to be a tough one at Dens. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to beat. Um, they've got a very good manager, Mark McGee. You know, he's, he's, you don't get a thousand league games without knowing what you're doing. So he'll have them really well organised. I watched the, the game at Motherwell on, on um, Saturday, and they're hard to break down. They played a 4 5 1. Mark's changed shape a few times as well, but the, what I will know is they'll be very organised. They've got a lot of pace with McMullen to break with as well. So they're they're by certainly, you know, they may be down the bottom, but they're certainly not a bad team. Still uh, at this moment under a bit of pressure um, by uh, the hamstring, so I don't think he's going to play, but uh, they've been playing a 4-5-1, as Stephen Robinson alluded to. He, he just wants to make them difficult to break down and then maybe snatch the odd goal. You can see Mark McGee's plan now. Yeah, you can. I just don't think they're they're kind of they're built for that. I think the the game at home they lost was it four goals to Liv was it Livingston. Yeah. Um I mean you, you could they could have had ten across the back. It doesn't if you're not going to pick anyone up or track a run or put in a tackle, it doesn't matter. Um and, and for having five across that back they were so open and so passive um, that I really thought they'd struggle. I mean, then and then they go and play a hib side who could probably still be playing now and not get into Dundee's box, but because um, they don't try and go forward, unfortunately for Tam. But um, I just I don't know with Dundee. I don't I don't I don't see them. Even if they get something from the game tonight, I don't see them kind of going on a run. 
Um, I just think they're too inconsistent, and I don't think they've they've got the, the players to, to camp in and and defend. I mean, I think against St Mirren, who don't score a lot of goals, they might get away with it. But against the teams like Livingston, who are more aggressive in the attacking third, then they they could get found wanting. So I can see why he's doing the four five one, but it depends who they're playing. I think he'll get away with it tonight against St Mirren because you know they've been short on goals for the entire season. But against the the, the better teams. The more like proficient teams when it comes to attack, and then I think I think Dundee will lose too many goals. Yeah, uh, strangely enough, though, as as, as Richard <clears throat> mentioned there about obviously the the debacle that was Livingston, um, Stephen Robinson mentioned a key element here. I'm going to slightly jump to the defence of Mark McGee. He's had a few jobs where, as many managers do, it's just it hasn't worked out. The fans don't like you. You can't get the results. You can't turn the club's fortunes around. You don't get to the point where you've had a thousand games in charge without being a good manager at a number of clubs along the way. He's got experience. Since he's come in, slowly but surely he started to, you know, have an influence and get them organised. No, he has. I mean, obviously he's disappointed. I think he's had a tough run. You know, I think obviously going to Celtic Park in his first game. They're not far away for getting a point there. You know, five or six minutes away for getting a point. The Livingston game is a disaster. But I think Livingston are very, very good. I think they're a good side. Um, and as I said, picking up two points against Hibs and Motherwell, two difficult games. So, listen, I think they've got to start winning their home games. I think they've got to be looking at Ross County at home, St Mirren at home, you know, St Johnston at home. That's games that you've got to go and win if you're going to stay up. So they'll, they'll target that game tonight and think, we need to win the game tonight. And they go above St Johnston if they win, which gives them a boost as well. But I, I don't see it. I, I just think it's two teams that it'll be nervy and I think it'll be a, a 0-0 or a 1-1. I think it'll be a, a tight game. Yeah. A draw for me. If it's nil nil and I've driven all the way up to Dens Park for that, I'll be raging by the way, Tom. Oh, it feels. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've gone two one to Dundee. Richard, where are you going? I agree with Tom. I'm going to say nil nil. Nil nil. All right. Okay. Don't bother going. <laughs> I'm just going to forget. Say, just, I'll, I'll head over to to Richard's. P- PSG Real Madrid. Didn't you're going to Dundee? I know. You must be getting way done. Well, I was going to say I'm going to head over to Richard's and we'll see if we can fix his boiler. <laughs> <laughs> so because it's freezing over there. Put Dens Park in to fix it. <laughs> Hey? Can I call the wife that for God's sake? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get battered. Oh, and by the way, can I guarantee you the most of that to a film? I'll guarantee you. He's, been, I, he's been saying it with my wife for about a year, isn't no, he? Then he met her at his, his birthday yeah. and he never said a word. No, but the good thing about it is your wife and Richard's wife have got something in common. <laughs> They don't, they don't need anybody to defend them. No, no. They'll do it on their own. <laughs> uh, you're dead, mate. The next time oh, I'm you a boiler, you did. Hey, so, on that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh, good stuff. Anyway, apart from anything else, um, you know, we're giving you our opinions. Don't forget, if you like the show, um, please share it with your friends. Tell them all about it. We're now exclusively on the YouTube channel. Just uh, hit PLZ Soccer on YouTube and hit the subscribe button. Uh, and if you put uh, your little marker on the bell as well, you'll get all the notifications of when we're live and all the unique content. Um, we've got some good stuff for you coming out this week. We've got James McPaik talking exclusively uh, about um, leaving Dundee, how he feels, what he wants to do. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice little insight into James. He's also obviously had a wee look at the quarterfinal Scottish Cup ties for us and he'll look ahead and give us his thoughts because as manager he's faced all the sides involved in it so who better uh, to give us his thoughts on the quarterfinal ties. So well worth it. Uh, Friday morning, 9 o'clock, Pat Nevin talking about uh, his time as a player uh, and of course he was the chief executive at Motherwell but uh, he played down south uh, played up here with Clyde and Kilmarnock and Motherwell as well. Had uh, a few chances to join Celtic, but uh, down south he played for Everton, Chelsea and Tranmere. And he was a PFA chairman in England too. So, And he loves his music. It's well worth uh, a listen if you're going to listen to it in the podcast and well worth watching on PLZ Soccer. He talks about his time, um, of course, as the chairman, what he'd like to see happen with Alzheimer's and dementia uh, and the insight into that uh, that's affecting so many football families. Uh, and he also talks about his time at Celtic Boys Club as well. So it's really an interesting listen. He doesn't uh, uh, pull any punches, I can tell you. It's well worth it. Pat Nevin coming out Friday morning at 9 o'clock on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Okay, some breaking news. Um, we were going to ask the question, where to for Scott Brown? Tam and I already said that we've obviously had a wee chat with him and he gave us a wee insight into you know, maybe hitting the golf course, enjoying his family time at the moment. 
Um, but there's a wee story saying he's been offered a quick fire route back into football by Brendan Rodgers um, because obviously they work together. Uh, and I think Rodgers has given um, the opportunity to join him at Leicester. Uh, he's been in contact with the captain since he took the decision to hang up his boots and he's invited Brown down to spend some time with him and his coaching staff in the Midlands over the coming weeks. Now, whether that's a situation of, look, you're not doing anything, mm -hmm. come down, have a wee look, see what it's like and maybe talk about opportunities or whether there's a genuine, look, there's a job here for you if you want it. Um, either way, you can understand why there's that connection. Well, Scott Brown's the only one that can decide, you know, well, that, that that's what he wants. We'll just have to wait and see, you know, if he takes it up. If he, if he does take it up, it, it probably means he does seriously want to go into coaching and, and stay in the game. So, and it'd be interesting, it'd be good for him to get in there and get another aspect in how a different teams work. Yeah. Um, is He's just leading you two down the garden path, wouldn't he? Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be golfing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, I actually think the great thing about it is he probably, probably will golf and will enjoy his family. But these things, when they come up at times, suddenly there's a sliding doors moment where you think, well, do, do I sit here till the summer? Or if something like that came right away, you would jump, wouldn't you? I, I, I certainly would. I think it would be a fantastic opportunity. Even if, you know, I know he's worked with Brendan Rodgers as a player, but even to see the other side of it, the all of the bits that go into to coaching and preparing sessions and preparing your team. And even if it is just a short-term deal until the summer, I think it, it would be a fantastic experience for him. Um, and, you know, if it were me in his position, then I would I would jump at it. Yeah. George says, don't go, Bruni. Rogers will be sacked before the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a job, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say to you, talk about pressure uh, in these things. But, uh, you know, it doesn't go hand in hand either, going through that learning curve where you, you want to take your badges, you then want to become a coach, you've been a great player, you know, it doesn't necessarily go hand in hand that you're going to turn into a great coach and it all works out for you. Circumstances sometimes can just derail you. Yeah, but it's very difficult when you've been in the game for so long to fall out of the game. You know, everything that goes with it, the dressing room banter, you know, the excitement of playing on a Saturday, you know, I say winning and losing, you've got to deal with both. And uh, to walk away from that and say, right, no, I'm just going to play golf. You know, it's a big void yeah. in, in, in your life. And But everybody's different. Everybody has a, a reason why they do things. And it'll be interesting to see what Scott Brown actually says about this opportunity. Yeah, I, I always thought as well, I mean, I tell you another man that I think uh, fits into that whole situation was Barry uh, Ferguson. Mm -hmm. um, when he was here, obviously, we, we witnessed him being the coach at Clyde. Uh, and then moved to Alawa. Uh, he's such a great player and I think so much to offer. Sometimes it's, it's you might not be the manager or sometimes the circumstances work out that you, you can't, as, as I mentioned, turn clubs around. But there's a place in the, in, the, uh, in the levels of coaching that maybe Barry can find. I mean, I, I'm amazed that he's never gone back to Rangers. Yeah, I think there was a time when I think he actually personally thought he was going to get the opportunity. Uh, not in the early days, but later on. Yeah. I mean, when you see people who get brought back to clubs behind the scenes, I was talking to I mean, Mick McManus today at the, the Celtic game. Not like that, just to go back and get involved, yeah. whether it's under 18, whether it's B, you're still involved, you're still there. He's still in the dugout, you know, at games. And, you know, you still get a kick at it. I mean, I don't think a lot of players don't realise that void when it's there, some people can deal with it, some people can't. Yep, OK, we wish him well, whether it's golfing, taking it easy with the trips, or mm -hmm. indeed heading down to Leicester City, if that does gather a bit of pace, we shall see. Um, Scotland are looking to try and play a couple of friendlies now that the situation with the Ukraine game has been pushed back to possibly June 4th in the summer. Um, a home friendly 24th of March and possibly an away friendly against the loser of Wales against Austria. You can understand Steve Clark's thinking if he can get those two games in place. Yeah, I think they want to play. You want to keep the momentum up from, from Scotland by last. You know, they're going to the playoffs, they're playing really well under Steve Clark on a great run of form. He wants to keep that you know momentum going and... Obviously, sadly, we can't play the Ukraine for, for obvious reasons, but I think if you can get, get a friendly against someone, uh, then I think it would be great for the supporters as well to go and support the national team again, because I think there's a real you know, belief behind the team now uh, from the Scotland supporters, and you want to keep that going. You don't want to go you know, another couple of months without Scotland playing as well. Yeah, here's what the SFA have to say on the whole situation. Uh, given the current situation in Ukraine, we support the decision 
uh, to uphold the request to postpone the match and reiterate our message of solidar solidarity to our friends and colleagues within the Ukrainian Association of Football. We now await confirmation from UEFA on the amended fixture schedule, including any displaced UEFA Nations League fixture. In the meantime, we are in discussions to organise a replacement fixture on 24th of March. Uh, we can also confirm that with the playoff semi-final between Wales and Austria going ahead in March, a friendly match away from home to the losing side will take place on the 29th of March. So, confirmation there. What about the uh, under-21s? Well, Scott Gemmell has named players from uh, right across the Premier League, Celtic Rangers, Hearts, Hibs and Aberdeen. Um, but there's still no Aaron Hickey in there. And it's. I think it's going to split the team here. I've got a, I've got a sneaky feeling it's going to split the team because obviously... Um, We've got two European Championship qualifiers, Scotland against uh, Turkey at Tynecastle on um, Friday, March 25th, before uh, going to Almaty to face Kazakhstan, Ruffy. Uh, now, he has, uh, you know, put up a, a lot of good, talented uh, <coughs> players there, including, of course, your former player, Zach Rudden, uh, is in the mix. But there's no Aaron Hickey now. Let's start the debate. He hasn't changed his mind. Scott Gemmell has said, you know, he's, he's had a chat with him to see if he's going to make himself available. It's not moving. He's not going to play under 21s. Should he be allowed to play <laughs> full international when it comes along if he's taking that attitude? Yeah, well, again, I mean, I, I'm not privy to what he, he said to Scott Gemmell at the time. You know, I'm only going what I see in yeah. the papers. And if it's what in the papers, the way it looks like, no, stuff you, I don't want to play for you. You know, I would... I don't think he said stuff you. He just well, said I'm not playing under twenty one football. Well, he did say that the first time he was tired and he was did too many games. So now it's just I think that, that well, excuse. Well, I know <laughs> that was the excuse that was made, but he was tired. And now it, now it just seems as if he's just went. I'm the wacko. Yeah, but that's what I mean. There's too many things. There's too many. You said that and Peter said that. You know, I'm not privy to what the the real discussion was. If he said to Scott Gemmell, you know, I don't want to play under 21 football, then it's up to Scott Gemmell to decide. Oh, you know, I'm telling you, that's the, that's the drill. Where has he been playing? Has he been playing left back for? Left back and right back. Yeah. Uh, both sides. Because the thing is, you know, he doesn't want to play under 21s. Well, currently, you're not going to play first team, Scottish first team left back, because both Tierney and Robertson are better than you. Yeah. Um, Barry Douglas as well, I'd throw him in there, more experience, doesn't even get a look in. Um, Yes, there's there's potential maybe at right back, but is he better than Ralston at the moment? I don't think so. Better, than, you know, uh, Parson. Parson. I know Parson's not been playing, so that's a different debate. But and the thing is as well, if you're part of the squad or you're even uh, Scott Gemmell, do you want him there? If he doesn't want to be there, because he's not going to come there and, and kind of he's not a player you want to put in if you know it's, these qualifying games are important games. I wouldn't want a teammate there who you couldn't be bothered turning up. I don't think it should impact his, his future Scottish first team uh, kind of potential. Yeah. But I don't think for the near future, I don't think he's getting in the Scottish first team. Yeah. Okay. Two different things though, aren't mm -hmm. we, Tam? Um, where do you stand on it? For me, don't want to play for the under-21s. Don't want to play for your country. Thank you and good night. So he's not going to get picked for the full squad? No. I think I cut your nose off to spite your face here, Peter. To be honest, I, 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 not with the current, not with the current set of left backs we've got. <laughs> no, quite happy, oh, well. quite happy to, to do it that. Might, you know? It might be an injury crisis, and I, I don't think you burn your bridges. I think you, you're disappointed that he doesn't want to come, but I think you're keeping an eye on him for the full squad. Yeah, aye. Is that the way you look at it. That's the way I'm looking at it. I, I didn't, I didn't think like that the first time. I think I wrote something on Twitter saying he sh should never play for a, Scotland again or Twenty One. Oh, What's changed your mind? Because I just think Black that. Clash. No, no, I just think that he's, 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 the Twitter, the Twitter right. account. No, 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 no. Yeah. I think he's just no. playing. A lot of people agree with me. I think he's just playing in Serie A. I think you can see where he's coming from. You know, he's playing in Serie A and he's, he's playing every week. And does he want to go into the 21s? I think he probably thinks I should be in the full squad. Which. But we, we've, he, we've, he, had, we've had we've had this debate before that clubs have said to players, like, we don't really want you to go. It's not that important. We'd rather have you here. And then, yeah. the, then the, the player, player makes a decision. You know, well, the club's playing my wages, you know, I'm not really part of this set-up, you know, and then he has to make a decision. Yeah. Plus, it's Kazakhstan away, so I'm going to give him a bye for that. Any party, if this wasn't the players <laughs> in that squad, yeah. tell me Mayo's not on it. Ah, uh, he is on it. Yeah. yeah, why? What's your well, problem? Means we miss him we for, miss two him games. for games. two games. Uh. Yeah, OK. Uh, well, Spreading himself thinly, playing can, it going as well, isn't he? Can I just say something to you? Well done to Lewis. He's made himself available. 
Yeah. Um, that's what know. Pythas was like. Yeah, yeah exactly. Bigger yeah. things to fry. Yeah. <laughs> if I was Pythas, let me tell them, no, Lewis, we want you here. Don't worry, we're, Make work, up a cafe, we're working on something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, now remember, my way, Richard's days. just... Uh, Richard's just... Um, oh, oh, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was going to do a line there. I, I was going to be really brutal about it, but I'm not going to because it'll probably, um, you know, get a real backlash. Never mind Twitter. Um, anyway, I don't think... I'm not having it, Ruffy. In the olden days, I wouldn't have had it either. There's been no. a lot of players, I can't remember who it is in particular, uh, said they didn't want to play, and then we thought about If they actually say I don't want to play for the country, then that's yeah. it. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the other big dilemma coming up, and he's playing well now for Newcastle, Ryan Fraser. Do you pick him again? Are you asking me? Yeah. No, I wouldn't pick him, no. No. Because he's been caught out more than one occasion saying I don't fancy that. Yeah. Again, I'm the time. You pick the best players to win the game, and players that are playing well, and he he's winning, he's playing well at the moment. So, I think you've got to kind of always leave the door open because you could get in a situation where you need need the players, and then you've like you say you've cut your nose off to spite your face. And yeah. I think someone like Ryan Fraser is different to to Hickey because I think he brings something different to the Scotland team that we don't have. Yeah. So I I would you know playing well pick him. And I don't think Steve Clark will pick him again. I don't think he will. That's, but, like, that, that's not the question. I know what I'm just saying. Give me, give me your answer. No. Give me your answer. You pick him? No, I wouldn't pick him. No. Do you know where you're going? Do you know where you're going today? No, I wouldn't pick him. No, why um, not? Because I think he's he's come out. It's been clear he's not wanted to play for Scotland. And he's, he's feigned injury and all that. Hickey, we don't know the full story. So I'll agree with Ruffy. Mm -hmm. God almighty, I got, you, you need to pick up the phone. You know the full story. Um, anyway, I tell you, I wouldn't pick him. Um, it's as simple as that. But is it a generational thing? Is it a case of, quite simply, uh, the younger generation want their cake and eat it? Are we just being old fuddy duddies with regards to this? Who knows? Uh, it's all about opinions on it. It's up to the manager. It may be Steve Clark or maybe the future Scotland manager has a big dilemma in about six or seven years if he's still strutting his stuff for Bologna and ripping it up or got a, an even bigger move. Who knows? Um, these things can change your mind. Um, John Suter, now, I was actually getting to panic because there was a wee suggestion that maybe he had his old Achilles injury again, but it doesn't seem to be the case, which is a, a huge relief to Hart short term, great relief to Rangers long term. Great relief for the boy, probably, I think, as well. He's had two bad, in bad injuries to his Achilles, and that's you know one of the worst injuries you can get, you know, you come back from. So he's come back well from them. Hopefully it's just a little knock. Uh, but a blow for Hearts, I don't think it's that much a blow. I think third place is... is it's tucked up, they're going to finish third, but in terms of the Scottish Cup, I think it will blow because he's a huge player for them, but as long as it's not a serious injury, then I think it'll be f everybody will be quite happy. Yeah, just before we uh, talk about uh, the, the Jags, uh, I noticed some of the referees suggesting that in this morning's papers, Ruffy, if we get VAR, why don't we get a sponsor to sponsor it? No, yeah, we've said that, well, you've yeah. said that. Weeks ago. people said it weeks ago, weeks ago. I, I've said that it, it should come for the top. Uh, I know Richard's saying that it's a lot of money and every club should have it. I think it would just be the Premiership, but there's a there's a pot of gold in that SFA building and somebody should sit down and yeah. think how they should get a sponsor and put some of the money that some of the bigger clubs take out of the game. How do you know there's a pot of Couldn't gold? Couldn't even get a sponsor I know, the, I, know what, well, so. I know what the divvy is at the end of the season. If you look yeah. at the divvy, I think the, the winner of the Premier League is so. <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, for the benefit of our younger uh, viewers, uh, the distribution is what he's talking about. Uh, for the benefit of those over 40, let's divvy up the money. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. I mean, I think the top, the top two get three million and two million, and then it's staggered in uh, accordingly, you know, and uh, I think it could be better used. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you are. Suddenly you've got an opinion now, but you don't know whether you're going to pick Hickey or not, eh? Honestly, no. one minute you're like ruthless, next minute you're fudging it all over the park. No, can you win the league? Yeah, can Thistle win yeah, the league? Of course we can, but maybe, yeah. the, maybe the teams in the Premiership that took the 1.5 million loan over 20 years yeah. could have put some of that aside for the VAR. Well, some teams have put money aside because uh, there was other clubs involved in a, a WhatsApp group who ended up uh, getting relegated. This we voted. Yeah, yeah. I after, <laughs> I after you had a call in the WhatsApp. <laughs> He's got a short memory, hasn't he, he has. Tommy? We've still got the message saved. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, can you win the league? Yes. Yeah, you confident he's going to win the league? Not confident. I think there's, there's, I think there's now. I think there's three teams could win the league, whereas a couple of weeks ago there was five teams. Yeah. Uh, Is it fair to say, Ruffy, that you, you know, when you think about the games that you've let slip, you could have been out of sight in this division? 
Yeah, I blame my centre forward for missing a penalty against the bottom last <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ryan Graham, uh, these are the things you that happen if yeah. you look if you go all these games in the championship you could sit and go what if we'd done that what if there what if and that just shows you how competitive the league is I mean and Corley is right in saying that the, the, the five teams at the bottom of the league will cause problems to the good sides yeah you know so you've got to battle these games as well as beat the big sides and uh, it will be ever can take that challenge on and win the games draws now are, are not what you want because every time you get a draw, you're, you're dropping behind. But there are a lot of big, big games coming up. Yeah. And, uh, you've, and you've got to win them. It's tight. Last night, you had to hold your nerve. Penalty. Converted. Yeah, but it's... And I know you're going to laugh when I say this, but... <laughs> it is. 1-4-0. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mini Ian McCall. Honestly, it's a mini Ruffy. <laughs> Honestly, what are you doing? You, you have get, to be there yeah, to see, see it. See, do, you, do you walk into some kind of a Pravda meeting where you all sit down and you go, right, here's the party line. This is no, what we say. You know, we, we had... The goalkeeper had an outstanding save. Um, they had a, a half chance in the, the first half that was kind of my fault. Um, and then second half they had nothing and yeah. we should have scored three goals kicking it over from 10 yards out and stuff yeah, albeit the pitch is, is tough at the moment but yeah it was it's it's nerve wracking it's tense it's not you know you want to score early and then kind of cruise to victory but we, we just don't do that at the moment and you know I I watched a few games in the stands and I missed a couple there through injury and I, I honestly don't know how any football fan does it because I can't deal with that level of stress. Yeah. On the pitch, you kind of feel it a little bit, but at least you're able to maybe do something about it. Whereas when you're in the stand just watching, it's it's, it's torture. And I, I, I hated those games when I was watching. Yeah. Um, well, listen, uh, you're in the mix now, uh, certainly. N never mind playoffs, they're in the mix time to win it. Um, you know, if they win their game in hand against Infermen, yeah, um, suddenly all bets are off. No, I think it's going to be tight. I think that's going to be three teams now that can win the league. Ruffy's right. You know, it's, there's three teams that can win the league now. And this was one of them. I think the, the two wins this week, two one nils, massive results. I think anything less than that, you'd probably think playoffs. But picking up six points, you know, coming back from one nil down against a broth away, big point. So they're, they're right in it, the, the old Jags. OK, um, listen... Good luck to you. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, last night, Lewandowski. I mean, come on, Ruffy. He's just outrageous. Uh, you know, this is a guy who's scoring seven seasons to drop 40 goals plus. Mm -hmm. Last night, I think he's got the quickest hat trick in Champions League history, albeit two of them were penalties. But he's still, he's just unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing he doesn't get, he, he doesn't get spoken about in the same vein as the, the really good ones, the Messi's, the Ronaldo's, but if you look at... I think at the general feeling though, Ruffy, is that he was denied the Ballon d'Or when he should have had it. Yeah. See, the thing is, I I, see, I thought that as well, but then see when you actually see Messi's statistics and the assists and the goals and the kind of the man of the match performances, you kind of go, well, I can see why he won it. Yeah. But I think like as an optic, you're looking at Lewandowski scoring all the goals and you know he is very impressive when you watch him play, um, and you, you can kind of think, well, Messi's already got what five, so may as well give one to Lewandowski because he deserves it. Yeah. But you know he, he's just unfortunate. He's 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 kind of like Andy Murray being in the you know being around with Nadal and Federer and Djokovic. He's he's Lewandowski's around and he's doing well at a time when you've got Cristiano Ronaldo and, and Lionel Messi. It's just unfortunate for him, but a fantastic player. I, I I must admit, Ruffy, and, and, and as time goes on, you, you get players who break records, you get athletes who just come in and, and, and then become the GOAT. Uh, I, I, I thought it was going to be a long time before I saw anyone to rival uh, Gert Müller at Bayern Munich. His goals for club and country were phenomenal, but this guy is just a machine. It's 42 goals in 35 games this season. Yeah, he's some player. Listen, I think listen, he's playing for Do uh, sorry, Munich, who are dominating the, the German league, which I think makes it easier for him. But he's a top player. Um, could he do it in the SPFL, but... Yeah, could absolutely. he do it on a Tuesday night at Fur Hill? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I don't with think he could, with unless, his, he, unless he had a snorkel. With, <laughs> with his touch, it's a good point, Richard. I think if he was playing for the Jags, he'd have 85 goals in 35 <laughs> games, Ruffy. Even if the pitch was waterlogged, yeah. he's that good. Yeah, I'd, he's another one you'd like to see playing in the English Premiership. Why? I, I think that's where they all want to be tested. I think they think that league's the best league. You know, it, it depends what team he went to. I don't know about Who would you have, Kane or Lewandowski? Lewandowski. I would have Kane. Would you? Yeah. Mm, I no. think Kane's doing it, doing it in a 
poor side. He just he, every now and then he just breaks into East Kilbride, doesn't he? He's just brilliant. <laughs> Kane's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Ruffy, have you seen my video last oh, night? By the way, have you seen his video? Oh. Get on to Tam's Twitter account because there's a and it, it was at the time when Katrina Harvey and That's myself right, eh? were working at um, STV and we did the Hibs half hour or the Hibs hour. Six, yeah, I think it was. and uh, Tam is a is, is a little boy in the boot room, and Katrina's gone to Easter Road to interview him. Oh, honestly, if you ever wanted to draw the stereotypical wee boy Ned, there he's there. <laughs> honestly, you've got to see it, Ruffy. It is hilarious. I mean, it's great stuff to hear you chat at that time. Innocent Tam and the whole world ahead of it. It was brilliant. It was great. And you've seen Kenny Miller in it with her in the picture as well, yeah. Yeah, as a young boy and big Alan Russell as well. So no, it was a crank me video. But you'll see it. I was destined for stardom when you see that interview. Yeah. Well, I'll, in the I'll, press. T- I'll tell you one thing though. What a young, Ned. It was you're embarrassing. A young, you're a young boy. You were able to string a sentence even then. You were. Uh, at least I could put a sentence together. Yeah. Merely can do the new. Yeah. It's. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's you got to see it, Richard. It's yeah, priceless we'll be stuff. Going straight on after this. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Liverpool didn't quite work out last night. Lost by a goal to nil to Inter Milan. Uh, Alexis Sanchez got himself sent off. I don't think uh, Marco Simoni would be too happy with his uh, forward for getting sent off. Inter were right back in this one. Liverpool, to be fair, did miss a few chances. And Jurgen Klopp, as ever, said, Oof, losing games doesn't like it. The art of football is to lose the right games. I still hate it, but if there was any any um, kind of game we could have lost and could have afforded to lose, it was tonight, uh, because the main target, obviously, of this competition is to to get through, but you are right. It's not that I'm here, like, over the moon. Yeah, it doesn't like losing, but still Liverpool, I thought, were, they had chances to win it, Ruffy. Yeah, they had the post what, three or four times, you know, yeah. the, the, as long as you're making the chances, that, uh, but it's still an every night, it won nothing, even against ten men. So they'd be glad when the whistle went and move on to the next one. Are they going to win it? No. No. Paris Saint-Germain for you? I'll let you know tomorrow. I fell into that trap before. Yeah, are you going to watch it tonight? Yes, my team were, what was it? In fact, it was Paris up against Barcelona the last time I phoned you yeah. after the game. Five, was it 4 nothing? Yeah. <laughs> He just he, he's, he, he, <laughs> Paris Saint Germain. <laughs> Paris Saint Germain. It was three not the way for home, wasn't it? Oh, oh no, there was a hole. Aye, three not the Aye, then they get pumped in the new camp. By the way, he's battered me. He's absolutely battered me and said, you know, Paris Saint Germain, this is it, on the way to the final to win it, finally end the whole uh, holy grail. And he said, there's no way Barcelona are coming back. And then you know what happened. Oh, I can remember that. And, it's the biggest comeback in Champions League history, aren't uh, it? Goal uh. by goal. I could just, text. I'm texting him, oh, this is on, this is on. And he was just slumped in his couch, raging. What a comeback it was. That was incredible. It was the one Neymar scores the free kick. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just, um, as a, you know, a neutral fan when you're watching that, you've got nothing vested in it. You just, um, you just like to see goals and good attack and play. And, and that was, that was the case that night. It was, it was some comeback. Um, and that you know that's why you watch the, these games, the European games. You want to see the best players doing the things that are good at, and, and we've certainly seen that on that night. Yeah. Um, who who are you going for? You going for Man City, aren't you? Well, I went for Inter, so that's um, <laughs> you know, that's them going. Sorry, you're back another one. Well, he does it every them. year. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you going for? I'm going to go for Real Madrid. Yeah. Oh, to win it. To win it. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Um, you're Man City, aren't you? Yep, certainly. I'm Liverpool and you're PSG. Mm-hmm. OK, uh, game on. Uh, and thanks. Uh, Man City or Munich is uh, some of the general uh, opinions on this one. The favourites um, and the second favourites. That's just put his neck out there, though. Yeah. That person. Um, sorry about that, Hugh Scott. He says, Marco Inzaghi. Surely that's what you mean. Yeah. Sorry, did I say Marco Simone? Uh, I got it wrong there, but it was one of the Inzaghis I, I knew. Um, there was Simone Inzaghi. Who's the other one? Uh, Filippo. Filippo. Filippo played with Born uh, offside <laughs> Yeah Oh he was really <laughs> yeah. oh. He was some player He was uh, He was absolutely magnificent Okay uh, Listen it's a joy talking about the football Hopefully you've enjoyed our chat Hit the subscribe button Hit the uh, bell And you'll get all the notifications We're really delighted that you are doing it In great numbers Our subscribers Going up day by day And of course people watching the programme uh, thanks for downloading the app. You can watch the programme live. You get all the breaking sports stories uh, that you would want on PLZ Soccer's 
uh, app which is in the App Store and in Google Play as well. Simple as that. I've gone over everything that you need to do uh, and don't forget you can join us tomorrow which is Thursday. We'll reflect on Dundee against St Mirren. We'll look in greater detail at Rangers and that predicted uh, lineup and how you think they're going to do against Red Star Belgrade. Thanks to Ruffy. Thanks to Richard and also to Tam McManus and from myself Peter Martin if the boiler can't be fixed tonight uh, then if you can make your house available or maybe even Ruffy and you could cuddle up with Richard um, because obviously your heating's not working that well is either is it? No I'm fixed now I'm fine. <laughs> You're okay yeah, now. Yeah, You'll never let it cuddle up with it. I'm uh, boiling. Yeah absolutely yeah. And, and after your line <laughs> after, 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 after your line about the boil, boiler I'd wait to make sure there's nobody on your landers tonight. Anyway from everybody here thanks for watching.